I think the best place to start is going to be by going over a vi little high level visualization of how this is actually working. Whenever we want the user to check out and actually receive a payment, what we need to first do, we'll take them to the cart page. We'll have everything that they've added to their cart. Everything is managed in there. And then we need to take that data from the cart page and we need to send it up to our form action. I have divided this diagram into four different parts. We have the client, we have the server, and then we have Sveltland, which is our actual website. We own all of this code. And then we have Stripe land, which is owned all by Stripe. So Stripe's backend API and Stripe's checkout UI. And we're actually gonna end up sending the user out of our website into the Stripe checkout UI, and then back from the Stripe checkout UI to our website. So the way all of this works is like I said, we start at the cart page, we go up to our form actions, send some data up there. I'll show you in the code what that looks like, but it's basically just taking everything out of local storage, putting it into a nice little JSON object, sending it up. We parse all that out in here. Then in this form action, we're gonna make an API call or really an SDK call, but that's just a wrapper around the API. We're gonna make a call to the Stripe API. This is gonna create a new checkout session for us. It'll send back all the information we need about the checkout session. And most importantly, it'll send back a URL which we need to redirect the user to. We will then go ahead and redirect the user from here to the actual Stripe checkout UI. They'll go ahead, input their credit card, their address, everything we need to collect. And once they've done that, they will be redirected back to the actual site to some success page or failure page, depending on what state happened. And then that's it. That's all we need to do on our end for actually initiating the checkout. But once all that stuff is done, Stripe's API will actually make a webhook request, which just means if you're not familiar with webhooks, basically what this means is instead of us making a request to their server, they're going to make a request to our server. So we tell them, hey, we're going to listen for your requests at this endpoint. We call those webhooks. And whenever the checkout session is complete, all that data is there and the user and the customer's payment has been processed, Stripe is gonna send a request back to us. It's gonna send a request back to this webhook handler and we're gonna be able to go ahead and fulfill that on our end. So the fulfillment is gonna happen here. The checkout is gonna be created and initialized here. It, they will actually put their credit card in here and then we'll give them a nice little thank you over here. So let me show you the code for how this is all actually working. We'll begin here just like we did in the diagram on the actual cart page. This is a very basic page and really the only important thing of note here is that we have in this handle submit function, the function where we're calling the form action to actually submit the cart and actually create our checkout session. We're just going ahead and we're passing in the cart data. So I have my cart data saved right here. We're gonna go ahead, stringify that, pass it in as a body. That'll be the request body in our form action and then we just run our form action. If we go to the actual site itself, we take a look at what this looks like. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up hitting this and then that will go ahead, fire that form action, and then we'll create our checkout session. This will we'll hit this. We'll continue as guest and we will now have our checkout session. So let me show you what is one of probably the two most important pieces of this, which is the checkout session creation. So there is a bunch of stuff going on here in the actual form action for our cart. First thing we're going to do, grab our body from the request. We're going to then go ahead, grab the user. We want to see whether or not there's an end user here. Basically what I'm doing is we want to allow guest checkout. So we want to allow users to check out without creating an account. And this does create some more complexity. Most likely if you're following along with this, you're probably going to want to use this for like a SaaS or something like that. And in those cases, you're going to always want to have a user. You want the user to sign in and then check out. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to grab our user, we're going to grab our customer ID, which is either going to be a string or undefined based on whether or not the user exists and whether or not they have a Stripe customer ID already. Then we're going to go ahead and calculate the total price. We need this to check whether or not we need to add a shipping charge to our actual uh, checkout. We're then going to go ahead and create the line items. These line items are the core of how Stripe checkout works for the actual products in the site. So like the little images and stuff, those are all products created in Stripe. If we go to our Stripe dashboard, we will be able to take, you can take a look at the actual list of products we have saved here. When we're creating products for the e-commerce site, we have to create them both on sediment and on Stripe. Because if we look here at like sunglasses as an example, we need to grab this product ID and we need to grab this price ID. And this price ID is critical because when we create that checkout session, when you look at what we have over here, this is, I used a different one, but this right here, all this information is populated based off of this API ID. And that API ID is what's getting passed in right here. So we're passing in that API ID into this price 
into the price uh, property of the line items object. So we pass in this price, we pass in this quantity, and then Stripe already has all that information so we can populate the checkout accordingly. Now, we're also going ahead and creating a new product here if they need to have shipping. I didn't feel like creating a dedicated shipping product on the back end and then storing the ID as an environment variable or whatever. So I just said, okay, if the total is less than 125, we're gonna go ahead and create a new US shipping option. It's just the flat rate for US shipping. And we go ahead, add all this data in, put in our price data, put in our quantity. This will actually create it so we don't need to have that ID. If you wanna get more into like how all this stuff works, definitely take a look at the Stripe documentation. They have a really good breakdown of how, what properties are needed and it's all very conditional. If you're doing subscriptions, you're gonna to wanna to create the subscription as a product within your Stripe dashboard. You're gonna set your pricing model to be recurring, but then otherwise it's basically the same. That whole thing is easily the most complicated part of this, so make sure you get that right. But once that's working, the rest of this is really quite easy. Once we've done all that, we can go ahead and create our Stripe checkout session. We're just gonna go ahead and say, uh, we wanna collect shipping addresses in the US. We only allow US addresses. We're not gonna ship globally because that's way too expensive. We're gonna pass in our line items that we created earlier. We're gonna pass in our customer stuff here. Like I said, this is more complicated than it probably will be for you because we want to allow guest checkouts. Basically all we're doing is just a bunch of fancy logic of undefines and stuff. So like our customer here is gonna pass in our customer ID. If we did have a customer, we pass in this customer ID and then it will link our checkout session to that actual Stripe customer. So if I've already bought one thing, this will link it to that same account, which is really useful for grouping orders and making sure that they can manage and handle things accordingly. We also have a customer creation flag here and a customer update flag, very similar logic. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and set up our metadata. This is gonna be critical for the webhook side of things because we need to know which products we're actually gonna be fulfilling for the user. So we pass in a list of codes, which is really just the quantity of the item and the code of the item. These codes are what we use internally to track what the actual product is. So we just get a list of all these different codes and we can see on the back end, oh, okay, they ordered XYZ codes. We can now go ahead and fulfill those. We also pass in the user ID. If the user's logged in and they have an ID, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and attach the customer, the customer that is created or the customer that is used for this checkout to that actual user. Otherwise, it's just an empty string and we don't really care. Finally, we go ahead and attach our success URL and our cancel URL. In this case, it's gonna be status checkout success. Remember, like I said earlier, once we complete this checkout, we're gonna redirect back to the site. That's what we're doing right here. We're collecting tax, doing a billing address collection, and then finally, once all that's done, assuming we get a URL back from our session, we track the event in Vercel Analytics, and we redirect to that session. So we go back over here to Sediment. I'm gonna go ahead and do a live video, live video demo two at gmail.com. For our shipping address, I'm just gonna smash the keyboard, um, or whoops. Uh, I'll just do Ben, and then we'll do random stuff here. Um, really does not matter. I just don't. I don't want to. I don't want to accidentally dock someone's address. Um, for the card details, when you're in test mode, you can use four two four two four two four two as a good. You can use four two four two four two four two four two as a nice little test credit card, which will always succeed. We can go ahead and do this. We can go ahead and do this. I'm gonna do this, but one more thing before we actually check out. Since we're in local development, a really nice thing that Stripe allows you to do is test your webhooks locally. So remember what I said about webhooks earlier where they're gonna send an event from Stripe server to our server? We need to tell the local Stripe instance where to send those events. So I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna open up a new terminal. I'm gonna go ahead and say pnpm run Stripe listen. This is an extra command I created within the sediment repo. Basically all it does is just stripe listen and then forwards it to the correct URL. I'll show you this code in a second because this is the other most important part. But once we've done that, we're now gonna listen for events. We can go over here, hit pay. It's gonna process. It'll take a second here. But then once this is processed, we're done. It'll redirect us to our nice little success page. And now everything's working. So let's go over to our API slash stripe route. When we go here, this is what these requests are made to. So you can see the checkout session was completed, all these different events have fired, and that's all gonna be sent to this one URL. There's a ton of boilerplate in this actual endpoint. 
You really don't have to worry about much of what's going on in here except for this. This is the important part down here, this event.type. So we're going to check what event type got passed in and we're going to check and see, okay, is this checkout.session.completed? Because that's the one we want to see. If the checkout session has been completed, then that means that the user has successfully checked out and we need to fulfill their order. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the session. So we're going to get the session and we're going to include the customer because we need to get their information. We're then going to go ahead and check whether or not this has metadata attached to it. If everything worked correctly in our setup, it will. We're going to get those codes I talked about earlier. We're going to grab our customer. If the customer is there, we're going to attach that to the user. Then after that, we're just going to go ahead, create our order and create our order products. These are very basic drizzle create statements. Nothing important here. Our data model is very simple. We basically just have orders and then those orders have many products attached to them. So nothing too insane here. Then finally, we just check, okay, if the user had an email, we want to send them a thank you for your purchase email. And that's it. We have fulfilled our order. We've saved into our backend that we have a new order. We have these products attached to the order and we can handle that accordingly. If we go back over to the site, I'm going to go ahead and log in. I have an admin account on this local instance. We're going to go to the admin page. We're going to go to the orders page. Then we're going to see right here, we have this new order which came in, the live video demo2 at gmail.com. I can click on this. I can view the customer. We get all the information we need right here, and we can go ahead and fulfill that order. The actual code for getting all that information onto the site is also really simple. If we go to admin slash orders, we're going to go to this page.server. Within our load function here, basically what we're doing is we're grabbing our orders out of the database. Then we can grab all the information that Stripe has, which is a lot of information. I'll show you the Stripe console in a sec here. So we can grab our checkout session here, pass in that order ID. We can check whether or not the uh, customer details are there because we do need those customer details. Then we just populate everything out here. That'll give us access to their email, the status of the order. It'll give us the Stripe customer ID, the order ID, the session ID, the timestamp. Everything we need to actually fulfill and manage these orders is right here. And if you look on our Stripe dashboard, and if you look on our Stripe dashboard, if we go to our payments tab over here, we just had an order come in. So live video demo two at gmail.com. We'll click on this and we get all the information we need. We can see the shipping address in here. We can see the products which were attached. We can see the payment method. We can see the tax collection, risk insights. Everything right here just works. It is fantastic. And that's the gist of it. Like I said, Stripe is not nearly as difficult as a lot of people make it out to be. You really fundamentally do just need to have a checkout system. You need to create the products in Stripe. You need to handle the webhooks and manage the events. Those events are what are actually going to you know, handle creating the product on your back end. And that's it. It's really not too difficult. Definitely check out the link to the code base down below. Um, you can get all the information that you need to get this up and running on your machine and also to get this working in production or and also to just get this working in your project. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I have a Discord. If you have anything more specific, definitely ask it in there. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful. If you enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.